This section here is about a conservative plate boundary uh, and as you can see from a conservative plate boundary you've got plates that are sliding past each other. Um, sometimes they slide in opposite directions on some plate boundaries but on this one here, so between the North American plate and the Pacific plate, they are sliding past each other, generally going in the same direction but at different speeds. Um, there are quite serious earthquakes that will occur in this region. They're not particularly common. It's not as if you have severe earthquakes all the time and major earthquakes all the time. As you can see in this region there have been four major earthquakes. But you do get a number of minor earthquakes on a daily basis. Uh, and just to give you a little bit more of an understanding about what the plate boundary actually looks like, um, if you have a look at this section here, this is a picture of the San Andreas Fault from the air. Uh, so you can see that uh, in this area you actually do have um, a definitive outline of where one plate um, starts and the other one ends. So you've got two plates, this here with the North American and this here would be the Pacific plate. So you've still got a little bit of land on that. So it's a peculiar plate boundary, but that's the actual region um, overall. I'll just to give you an example of the sort of devastation it can cause, this was from the Northridge quake uh, in 2004. So it's been two decades since this quake occurred. Um, but you can see the level of damage with the highways collapsing uh, in this region as well. So very expensive to fix and also very dangerous. Think about how dangerous that sort of thing would have been for the vehicles that were travelling uh, along this highway um, given that you don't get warnings about quakes uh, so that would have been a very dangerous thing and if you want to have a look at just how complicated the plate boundaries in this region actually are this is a little bit more to do with the actual movement of the faults and this is a very very detailed one more detailed than you would need for GCSE um, the one that you can see here is the one that you need for GCSE but nevertheless, I thought it would be interesting for you to have a look at this one, uh, just so you can see uh, quite how complex and complicated um, the fault lines are. It's not as simple as one straight fault. There are lots and lots of faults scattered around uh, in this particular region. Uh, so consequently, it makes it a very complicated area. But as I said, this um, diagram here is appropriate for GCSE so as far as a conservative uh, plate boundary goes. This is a collision plate boundary and this is what happens when two continental plates start to move together um, and there, there will always be a series of faults or potential fractures in the rock. Now the, the thing about collision plate boundaries is that as they are both continental plates they are of the same density and so because they're of the same density, one of them cannot subduct underneath the other one. So they just push against each other. They just continually push against each other, which leads to a rise in the middle. So these sort of fold mountains will occur, and it will start to force the mountains upwards. Now, the interesting part about these is you will get earthquakes. Um, in a collision zone... Volcanoes are exceptionally rare. You don't normally get volcanoes just because if you look at the distance from the asthenosphere to the surface, it's always quite a distance where the majority of the fault is. So consequently, you don't really get volcanoes there. They are exceptionally rare. Um, you do get very destructive earthquakes because there's an awful lot of pressure forcing these two sections together. So you get earthquakes and the potential for landslides. So it ends up happening... Oops, wrong thing there where you will get things like the Pakistan earthquake, which was quite severe, uh, caused an awful lot of damage. So you can further have a look at that if you need to. And also, don't forget that it is these type of plate boundaries that formed things like the Himalayas. So Mount Everest here was formed by the processes that go on in collision plate boundaries. This section here is about constructive and destructive plate boundaries and if we start off with the constructive plate boundaries this is where you've got two areas of um, usually oceanic plate that are moving apart from one another. Okay. 
so this is the way in which Iceland would have actually formed. So if you just have a look at um, an Icelandic volcano, some of the things you notice about it. Um, number one is it's shallow sided. It's not steep sided, it's not your traditional volcano shape, it's shallow sided. And that's because you've got very, very hot uh, and runny magma which flows very quickly down the sides, takes a lot longer to cool, so consequently it makes a shallow sided volcano. Um, and just to give you a diagrammatical example of that, the sort of example that we've got, this, this particularly uh, shallow sided volcano where these two plates have been moving apart from each other and the magma is rising, rising up from the middle. So just to recap on that section there, you have got, in this region, when you've got constructive plate boundaries, you have got basaltic, note that, magma, which is very hot and runny. It creates shallow-sided volcanoes. Okay. Now when it comes to destructive plate boundaries, that's slightly different so where we've got our destructive plate boundaries here, this is where we've got an oceanic plate being subducted underneath a continental plate, as you remember because of the different densities. Oceanic plate is more dense than continental plate, so consequently it subducts underneath. Uh, so you've got your subduction zone here, but this also generates different types of volcanoes at this point. So, uh, just to give you an idea of the volcanic shape at a destructive plate boundary, you'll notice that the boundaries create much steeper sided volcanoes. So it's not like the shallow sided volcano we saw at a constructive plate boundary, it's the steep sided volcanoes that we get at a destructive plate boundary. And so these are just a couple of examples. This, this one here is in uh, Ecuador, which lies on that South America Nazca plate boundary. So again, you can see the steep-sided uh, nature of those volcanoes. There. Okay. So to recap on the type of volcanoes that you would get at this section, a destructive plate boundary, you will get andesitic magma, which is slightly cooler magma, and that traps more gas, uh, and also steam because it traps the water as well, and that in turn makes it more explosive. So consequently, it cools uh, a lot quicker. So it doesn't give the um, magma a chance to flow down the sides of the volcano. So you get steeper-sided volcanoes. Now, when it comes to looking at earthquakes in these particular regions, in a constructive plate boundary, you get fairly small earthquakes because the earthquakes are only caused by uh, friction created as the plates rip apart. So you don't get the same types of uh, earthquakes that you would get on a destructive plate boundary where it's very aggressive, you've got one plate pushing underneath the other one so you, you've got a very very aggressive movement, you've got a lot more friction so you can get very very destructive earthquakes that can can be up to sort of 9.5 on the Richter scale um, and it also, as it's under the ocean at this point here you've got the potential for a tsunami being created and so that's the, that's the potential da added danger in that particular boundary so just to recap on this section, um, as a reminder, we have conservative plate boundaries, constructive plate boundaries, destructive plate boundaries, and collision plate boundaries. Um, you your examples down there that you can see, uh, and just in terms of what earthquakes and volcanoes will form, on a conservative plate boundary you'll get destructive earthquakes and small daily tremors but no volcanoes. On a constructive plate boundary you'll get small earthquakes, so 5 to 6 on the Richter scale. Um, not particularly dangerous volcanoes as far as volcanoes go, uh, but much warmer magma, so consequently you get that shallow sided volcanoes. At a destructive plate boundary you get very very destructive earthquakes up to 9.5 with tsunamis because of the aggressive nature of the plate boundary and you get very, very explosive volcanoes because it's cooler, so it traps more gas, traps more, um, well, it's got the potential to create more steam from the water that's in the region, 
uh, and you get a steep sided volcano. Last type of plate boundary, collision zone, a uh, type of thing you'll find in the Himalayas. You do get very destructive earthquakes because of the, the aggressive nature of the plates moving together and them being of the same density. But volcanoes, as we said, are very rare because it's difficult for them to actually, for the magma to escape at that point. Okay?